In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We are coming to an end to our series about uh, the path of holiness. So we discussed four topics before, how compromising might lead to unholy life. Spoke about believing lies might lead also to unholy life. And last week, Abuna shared with us how we can integrate our gifts, our uh, the fruit of the Spirit in me as part of enriching the whole body of Christ. And today, we are talk, going to talk about the fruits of holiness. Let me start with you first with this verse, a couple of verses from Galatians chapter 6. When we think of fruits, always our mind goes to sowing and harvesting. And here, it's a positive warning. Sometimes we take it in a negative way, but St. Paul put it in a very positive way if we receive it in a positive way. So he's telling us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. What does it mean? If you don't believe on what is coming next, you are deceiving yourself. So please don't deceive yourself. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. He's telling you and me that we are in a continuous process of sowing and reaping. Today, I'm reaping what I have sown maybe a week ago or a year ago or all my life. And in the same time, today I'm sowing what I'm going to reap tomorrow and next week, next year, and maybe for the remaining part of my life. So if you don't believe in this concept of sowing and reaping, you are deceiving yourself. So what are the two options? One of them, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Maybe I am suffering this morning from reaping corruption. He's saying me, you have sown this one at one point, maybe years ago. But you can have an end. You can have a new start. You can stop it now. You can come before the Lord, go to your father of confession, confess your sins, and restart. And start re sowing what you want to reap in the future. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. This, uh, those are the two options. There is nothing in between. Ask yourself, what did you do last night? What did you sow last night? What are you going to reap out of it in a week or, or more than that? Then let us focus on one more thing. If now we are talking about the path of holiness and I would like to receive something to enjoy because I choose to be holy. I choose to be set apart for a divine purpose. Watch once more. We never heard of someone who was sowing at one point potatoes and he was reaping never happened. So what are you going It's of the same kind. The other thing is it's relevant to the quantity of what you have sown. So if you put one, whatever it is, any fruit on the soil, you'll get a certain multiplication. If you put two, you have double of it. If you put three, you have triple of it. So he's telling you what you have sown in the past, if you are going to reap it of the same kind. And in the same time, it is relevant to the quantity of what you have sown in the past. This, just put this in front of your eyes about every word, every act that you are going to do in your life. And before we start, again, if you want to sow something, you know that you are putting effort, money, time. And you can't say, I am sowing today and I am reaming now. It's a lie. So at the beginning, we need to put in our mind, the past is very joyful and painful. It's very joyful, but it is full of stumbling blocks. But he's telling me it's worth it. Why? Because in the end, St. Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 10, we are called to be partakers of his holiness. He doesn't want anyone to, live, to have a holiness less than that. Let me give you an example in a minute that you know it. That's why you go through it very quickly. We know that Joseph chose the path of holiness. 
And in Genesis chapter 39 and verse 11, but it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and, and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. So she was not pleased with his holiness. She said, See, he has brought into this, to, to us this Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice, and it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. If you choose the path of holiness, there is a cost. Are you ready to pay it, to reap the fruits or not? Sometimes when you feel there is a cost, no, I need something for free. It's what Jesus did, has sanctified us freely. But it's telling us there is a cost for your sanctification. There is a cost and time and effort to reap the fruit of it. Uh, Joseph spent 13 years since he was sold as a slave by his brothers till he became the second in Egypt after Pharaoh, when he was set up above all the land of Egypt, as you'll see it at the, very, at the very end. So again, at the beginning, it's worth it. It's the law of sowing and reaping, and there is a cost. But it's worth it because it's joyful path to holiness. Then, he's telling me, if you accept to pay the cost, then the fruits will start to appear in your life. Some of them will be very appealing. Some of them, uh, you, are, you can say, and what is next? Is it all? Here is one of the very beginning of his gifts. He started to see that God has given him the power to interpret visions and dreams. In chapter 40, Genesis 40, and Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. He was able to interpret the visions and the dreams. So is it the end? Okay, I have been given the gift. I'm still in the prison. Are you going to pursue the same path of holiness? He's telling you, I will give you things beyond your imagination. There's a lot of fruits of this path of holiness, but wait. It needs time. It's costly. You have paid the cost already, and it needs time to reap in due time. So the first, or at the beginning of the story, he was able to see that God is empowering him with this gift of seeing visions. So what is next? Why I am insisting to go through this path of holiness? If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, St. Paul is telling us, every one of us asks this question, I would like to know the will of God. I would like to be in his will. I don't want to go any place away from his will. And he's telling you, it's time to know it and to see it and to enjoy it while it is costly, while it needs time, and while it needs effort. He's telling us, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. When I choose the path of holiness, I choose to be in his will. What does it mean to be in his will? To be in his will, it means I became attuned with the will of God. I'm not going to go any place that you don't want me to go to. I'm not going to say a single word that is not pleasing you. As St. Peter was telling us, if anyone speaks, let him speak the very oracle of God. I became a heavenly person for our citizenship is in heaven and my language, my attitudes, my directions, everything became in the will of God. So when we pursue the path of holiness, we are in his will. Then I see myself embraced with the bosom of the Father. I see myself in his Son. I am not away from him anymore. In Second Corinthians, he's telling me, you have told many times, our Father who art in heaven, but deep inside, you can feel it. Deep inside, you can say, I can't relate to our Heavenly Father. Many reasons you can have it. Some of them, I was disconnected with my biological father. Some of them, I tried him many times and he failed me. And he is telling me, if you are in his will, if you choose to live this path of holiness, you will enjoy his fatherhood. Let me read with you this couple of verses. He is, in fact, St. Paul was quoting the Old Testament. 
Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. Be holy. To be holy is to set apart for a divine purpose. Says the Lord, don't touch what is unclean. Be holy. And I will receive you and I will be a father to you. Are you grumbling and accusing God? I cannot enjoy your fatherhood. He's telling you because you didn't choose to be set apart. You didn't choose not to touch what is unclean. But because we are pursuing this way of holiness, it's time to tell him, now I can enjoy saying to you, Abba Father, our Father. So if we are looking, what does it mean to have the fruits of the path of holiness? I will enjoy the reality of my calling. I have been called to be the son or the daughter of God. But till now, it's a word of nonsense for me. He's telling me and you, if you choose to be set apart, you will enjoy it. I will receive you and I will be a father to you. Again, we are not trying to state points to say this is, these are the fruits of the holiness. It's unlimited, in fact. But what I am trying to share with you, maybe touching my personal need. Do I enjoy a real personal fatherhood with him? If not, he's telling me, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to receive you and to call you father, or to call me father and to enjoy my fatherhood for you. Then he's telling us, if you are able to be in my will, you are able to tell me, to call me a father. But still, I feel I am not protected. If you are my father, please protect me. If you are my father, why I am suffering such suffering? And then, in Exodus, he's telling us, it's your decision. I am offering my full protection. But my full protection doesn't mean that you are not going to be sick. It doesn't mean that you are not going to be persecuted or discriminated. It means you'll be victorious in all of them. So in Exodus chapter 24, it's a very nice and small story. Let me share it with you and then we'll read a couple of verses. So God commanded Moses to bring his, uh, his brother Aaron and his two sons to come to the mountain. And then he went up and he brought the commandments and came down from the mountain. Moses did something, used to do it many times before. He killed the sacrifice and he split the blood into two parts. He sprinkled the first half on the altar of burning offering and he kept the second half. And now it's time to tell you, would you like to be protected by choosing a way of holiness or not? It's your choice. But from my side, from God's side, I am offering full protection. How? Hear what he says. It's Exodus chapter 24 and verse 7 and 8. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. Why are you calling this book the book of the covenant? Because if you agree on it, you are in the covenant. You are fully protected in the covenant with God. And they said, all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. This is our reaction. If you choose the way of sanctification, if you use the path of, of holiness, here is the result. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. He is telling you, you have the communion this morning. You choose to be in the covenant. But before that, you choose to be obedient, you choose to be holy, you choose to be set apart for a divine purpose. That's why you're under the full protection of this covenant. But again, under full protection of the covenant, it means I'm victorious wherever I go. It doesn't mean that I have no problems. I have many problems, but victorious in each and every problem in my life. That's why enjoying the full power of the covenant is a fruit of choosing the path of holiness. I choose to be under the full authority of the word of God. That's why he was telling them, here, we will do and be obedient. It's not I will know. It's not I will hear. The decision was, as most of the rabbis saying, first time and maybe the only time in the whole Old Testament to say, we will do, the word here, obedient, in Hebrew, and listen, not obedient. What does it mean to do before listening? Because we believe that this is God, and he is the one who is talking. I choose to obey him even if I can't comprehend it, out of love of his authority. 
That's why the church is putting before, before our eyes the full authority of the word of God. Those people received it and they said we will do because God had spoken through Moses. St. Paul tells us the same in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. St. Paul was preaching to the Thessalonians, which was the first part written in the New Testament. So uh, do you believe in the scripture? He is talking to Gentiles. He is telling them, he is praising what, how they received the word of God. Why? He said, because when they heard the word from us, they didn't take it as a word of men, but as of God, which is able to work on those who believe. When we hear the word of God, do you have such authority in our minds and our hearts that God is talking and talking to me? If he is, and I'm saying I will do and listen, or I do, I will be obedient, it means I choose to be under the full protection of the covenant of God. And then he's telling me, if you are able to take him as a father, choosing to be in his will through the path of sanctification, and now you are enjoying the full power of the covenant, it's time to enjoy the fullness of his blessings. Do you miss a blessing? Find out the missing word I do, I will do. There's a co 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 commandments you put it aside. It's easy to gossip. All of us are gossiping. It's easy to lie or to be angry. It's normal. There is nothing called normal sin. So hear what the Lord says in Deuteronomy chapter 28. This chapter is a big list. It's 68 <clears throat> verses about blessings and curses. Hear the first two verses. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. It's your choice and my choice. If you choose to obey to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And it was. Whenever they choose the full obedience, they were above all nations. Read the whole Old Testament. And when you, they choose to disobey, they were scattered everywhere. And then he continued. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And again, do you miss a blessing in your house? Do you have uh, uh, disobedient kids? Do you believe that you have a lot, but you can't enjoy anything? You miss the blessing. Read, please, when you go home, the blessings from verse 2 till verse 15. It's thinking you can change the banner above your house today. It's a house of blessing as the church is blessing, praying. It's not cursing anymore, but it's upon your choice to go through the path of holiness, the path of obedience, which means above all and receiving a lot of blessings. Again, when we speak about holiness, we are not only aiming for the fruits, we are enjoying it based with shoes, based on which shoes the way of holiness and the path of holiness. So, if I choose him as a father, being in his will, uh, in, in my walk, in this path of holiness, then I have this full protection of the covenant, and now I have the full blessings. He's telling me there is something more important than that. Many of us are claiming, but where is God? I can't see him in my life. I can't see him in my hardships. I can see him in the life of those even where martyrs for his sake. It's my own eyes. It's my own blindness. And here, if you want to open your eyes, St. Paul is telling us, you have again the opportunity and the choice to have these open eyes once more. Pursue peace with all people. Ask yourself, are you pursuing peace with all people? Especially those who are hating you and persecuting you and discriminating you? And then he is continuing. And holiness without which no one will see the Lord here and there. Do you miss seeing him? Find out your unholiness. It doesn't mean that you are going to be sinless. There's a big difference between choosing the full path of holiness, I'm still falling. But the way, the ch choice, still 100% of holiness. Still, I have some of my own weaknesses. And I'm resisting to the bloodshed. I'm, I'm not saying it's okay. Everyone is falling. I'm resisting to the bloodshed. 
and then my eyes will be open. If <clears throat> your eyes are still not open, he is telling you, you miss the path of holiness. You miss the seriousness of the walk towards the holy life. If the Lord was telling us through St. Paul that we are called to be partakers of his holiness, and we receive the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier, from day one. And one of the names of, the, of God in the Old Testament, Jehovah Makadish, Jehovah who sanctifies me. It means he is telling you, this is my job in you. If you want to glorify me, it's time to receive my sanctification and to pursue it day and night. So seeing the Lord, it's a divine human act. He wants us to see him, but we can't see him if we choose unholiness anymore. Then he is telling me, now you have to be more active in your walk of, of holiness. It's very important to see that you need to live a life of no offense. How? Let me read with you Luke 17 and verse 1 and 2. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come. Okay, where are you in this context? But woe to him through whom they do come. If you choose the path of holiness, the offenses, the stumbling blocks are everywhere. But are you the cause of it? Are you the designer of it? Or are you the one who is trying to overcome it by the grace of God through choosing the path of holiness? And he's continuing. But woe to him, through him they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. And then he's asking me, are you enjoying the life of no offense, or are you in the opposite side? Do you imagine if the Lord himself is telling you, and he were thrown into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. He's saying, if you pursue the path of holiness, your life will be a blessing for everyone. He called Abraham for this. You will be a blessing, and through you, all nations will be blessed. But you first should be a blessing. Then through you, all nations will be blessed. We started with the story of Joseph, when we saw that he paid a high cost. First to his brothers, then to his own personal sanctification, and then he spent 13 years in this journey. But again, because it's costly, it's worth it. And there's a great reward. It's telling us in Genesis chapter 41. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, after again, he used the gift as a fruit of his sanctification to interpret the uh, dream to, the, to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in as much as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Wow. We were waiting for 13 years, living a holy life. You did not grumble against the Lord for a single day, waiting a destiny from heaven. No one likes this man. And then he has continued. You shall be over my house and over all people and shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And the world wants to sit you over the whole land to be his own personal ambassador. At your home, in your family, in your workplace, in your church, in your community, wherever you go. When you choose the path of holiness, when you choose a life of sanctification, when you choose to be in his will, enjoying his fatherhood, being fully protected with the covenant, and you live life of no offense. Let me share with you the verse that I started with. Just, I need you to think just for a few seconds in this verse. St. Paul is telling us, for they indeed for a few days chastised us as seemed best to them, but he for our prophet, that we may be partakers of his holiness. He wants to tell us, you cannot be holy, but I can bestow my holiness on you through the work of the Holy Spirit. We hear it in the liturgy, the holies are for the holy, and immediately we as congregation will cry out, one is the Holy Father, one is, we are humbling, our, we know that we do, don't deserve it, but you are the one who is bestowing this holiness about, in us. You are the one who is calling us to choose it once more 
every minute, every word comes out of my mouth, every thought comes to my mind, is another choice. I choose the path of holiness. That's why he is telling us, it's not only about fruits of holiness, it's about us. It's a lifestyle. It's not a list of do and don't do. Yes, we have many lists, we have many rules in the Old Testament and New Testament. But the reality is, it's about your lifestyle. Are you directing your life to be fruitful in such a way because you choose to set apart for a divine purpose, to be a light of the world, to be salt to the earth? I'm not, the Lord is not calling us to be isolated from the world, but to be separated for a divine purpose and then going back to sanctify the whole world and the whole earth. And then he is giving us again a sign. Don't think the devil is going to clap his hands for your choices. We said it's costly. He reached this woman against him to put him in such trial. And he's telling us, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions from the one enemy. The one who doesn't like holiness, the one who is inserting and spreading unholiness everywhere. So he's telling me now, if you choose to be in the Holy One, you are not exempted from persecution, but you are going to be victorious in it. That's why the Lord was telling us in John chapter 16, the very famous verse, that in the world you will have many tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. But before that he said, I have told you these words that you may have peace in me. If you are following the Holy One who even prayed to the Father in John 17, that, enc that encouraged us very much. Why? He said, sanctify me for thy sake, for their sake. Why? Because he is telling us, if I sanctify myself for you, and you are coming to unite yourself with me in the Eucharistic union, then you are sanctified in me and sanctified for me to the Father. That's why he is telling us, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's part of the joy of the journey. Don't reject it. That's why even the Lord said in Luke chapter 10 that if you forsake anything for the sake of the kingdom of the gospel, you will have hundredfold plus persecutions and eternal life in the life to come. So he's encouraging us to choose the path of holiness. Let me go through them in a minute to remind you of what we have said, that choosing the path of holiness, I am in a path, I choose to be a sower and reaper in the same time. And you are reaping what you have sown, and you are sowing today what you are going to, uh, to reap later. So that Joseph had paid a high cost at the beginning for 13 years, was nearly forgotten, but they said he is the man who never said if. If I accepted to sin, nothing would happen because no one will see me and it was a mutual agreement. He didn't say so because he is in the presence of the holy, awesome God. Then we saw that the Lord is going to gift us while you are still in this miserable status. He gave him the gift of interpreting the dreams and it was a choice to be in the will of God because he was telling us, this is the will of God, your sanctification. Then we are enjoying his fatherhood. If you are set apart, you are going to call me a father. And we saw that we are under the full protection of the covenant and we are able to receive all the blessings when we obey him. And finally, we live a life with no offense. We are not going to be in this wrong direction, but we choose to be in him walking in this holy path. And then we said at the very end, if you miss seeing the Lord, it is because of a chosen unholiness. It's time to come back to my senses, to reject every unholiness. Still I am failing, I am falling. Still I am resisting, but I am resisting to the bloodshed without hesitation. Because pursue peace with every all people, all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And it's encouraging us once more to desire this way of holiness is a persecution, but will be victorious in each and every walk with the Lord. May the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever. Amen.